Oh. <laughs> Welcome back. So yeah, our first video in a while, um, kind of YouTube went to the wayside, we've been busy. Uh, have you seen the intro? Um, I am in the new shop uh, right here on the property, so we got that done. So that gives me um, somewhere to do my crap instead of doing it in the driveway. Uh, so uh, today, I'll just cut to the chase, got a project going on here with the Jeep. Um, basically doing a cal intake and using the stock air box, and I'll kind of run through some of that. but. Um, I just gonna go ahead and do it, but I haven't done a YouTube video in a while, and it's pretty simple stuff, so it'll be pretty easy to, to document. So here we go. All right, just gonna kind of lay out the basic principles of this. Um, this is the uh, 97 two door extra yellow familiar. It is a little, probably a touch larger than the last time you've seen it if you're strictly a YouTube follower, but I have been busy, got a lot more to do. Um, basically, the principle is as of right now, this this air box, as far as the intake goes, uh, it pulls air from right. Uh, right there so that really puts the placement uh, somewhere just about this way so uh, we've got creeks and stuff on the property back here if you um, if you were to drop down kind of nosedive into some of the stuff which a lot of the entries are like that there is a chance that you know I've had it rushed over the hood before too so you've got a little chance of getting water inside the intake then there's hydro lock you know all that stuff so uh, pretty common knowledge for the most part uh, what we're going to basically be doing is uh, is blocking off this front side assembly uh, and I'll be taking in, um, for those squeamish, we will be cutting a hole. Um, I'll basically be cutting a hole here uh, into the cowl and one on the back of the air box. So by blocking this off, we'll change the point of air uh, to the back side of the air box. And then we'll run up some duct work, stick it right there. And then from there, uh, it'll just it'll start pulling air from the wiper cowl area. Um, uh, there's a couple other alternatives that are cow intakes that you can buy Thor I don't think they are in production anymore but um, there's the uh, the Spectre kit or whatever but what they essentially do is they'll take and um, run straight off the throttle body come over the top of here and then you actually plumb it into that side the Thor model has the intake or the filter directly in the cow um, I believe the Spectre model has got it somewhere in you know either way they kind of look nice and it cleans up if you're wanting to do anything where you need a second battery or just opening up your options for maybe onboard air um, it gets rid of this whole assembly so so without further ado um, let's go ahead and get started on the teardown stuff but uh, first I'll kind of maybe actually uh, let's run through a list of stuff that you're gonna need uh, to make all this happen so uh, so with that said just uh, just kind of roll back here with me for a minute um, we'll head on back to the toolbox area and this is where we're gonna be putting this shit together um, I'm basically just going to go into the stuff that you need that you can pick up somewhere. Um, most of this stuff can be acquired at any, you know, major auto parts chain, uh, Advance, O'Reilly's, AutoZone. Um, oh, and one thing I will, uh, not be doing is telling you exactly what socket you got to get and all that shit. Uh, figure it out. Probably not too hard. Especially with something like this. Um, there's probably like two bolts you got to fool with. Everything else is clips and stuff like that so uh let's get to it with the stuff that you need i will lay those out right here right now you will need one of these this is a three inch uh i forget the whole length on it but this is basically just uh it's going to be your coupler ordeal you're gonna have this side in the back of the air box uh and this side going up to this guy right here boom adapter this is going to mount onto the firewall essentially and connect itself into the cowl um these two what's this Oh, 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 yeah, they're going to go together like that. Considering those, you'll also probably want a clamp of some sort. You'll want uh, some sort of silicone adhesive slash sealant. Um, I like liquid nails. Uh, I'm sure there's a, you just choose one, whatever. This is going to be for your junction, basically, where you, uh, you're going to be drilling a new hole in the back of the airbox to put that, to put this into it. Uh, this is just to seal it all up. You will need something like this. So, and the whole thing that brings me to this boy right here, three inch hole saw. Yeah, see that shit right there? That looks evil. It's like a really angry megaphone. 
I cringed a little bit when I did that, I'm sorry. Uh, in addition, you also need something to block off that uh, the front, the original opening. That way it pulls air from what you're doing here. Um, I'm probably just gonna use something, and it doesn't matter. You just stick it up there, glue it, I'm probably through a, throw a couple screws in there. Just something to block it off. So, whatever you want. Also, and, and quite possibly the most important, is uh, is just a, a a beverage of your of your preference uh, to uh, keep you going. Staying hydrated is key. Fuck that water because it's going to be pass. All right, back over here. Uh, you need to get this top lid off first so you can access the bolts, all that shit. So um, this right here kind of comes off. I've already got this one loosened up a little bit. Um, you don't necessarily have to. You can always just take and pick this up, but it'll give you a little more space to work. So um, basically, this is retained by three clips. One there one there and one here and it just pivots off these things on the other side you just kind of lift that bad boy up and shimmy that sucker on out uh, but first we need to get these two off of it really like i said just uh remove those two connections and then now you're down here with your filter so pull that bad boy out um you'll notice two uh two bolts down here that secure this uh down to this portion of the engine bay so you're gonna pull those and get this thing out of your damn way they are both uh, 13 millimeter. I'll go ahead and give you that tidbit. Uh, you'll probably want to use something with an extension just to make it a little easier. And uh, go ahead and remove that bad boy. Quick update on that last note. Uh, there's there's three. I totally forgot about that. There is there's three. They're all they're all 13 millimeter. Okay, I've done this a hundred times, and I yeah, still forget that one every time. So yeah, don't, watch out for that guy. Um, after they're all out, uh, you just, just pull up and get out. Uh, I will note, and I think this is for just finding location, um, the rear is actually studded. Um, so, um, so it'll be a nut back here and then two bolts. Just pull it out. And I get all this space to work with. And uh, we need to start doing some modifications on the box. We'll be drilling a large hole right there. Um, that will eventually lead up to a large hole right here. I should also mention while we're here, um, you have to do this right here if you end up changing motor mounts. It makes everything a lot easier. Um, I installed Brown Dog uh, poly mounts on my last build. Um, this will be getting them as well, but uh, you can clearly see you've got a lot of access to it right here. Um, and that should be obvious, but just thinking while well, I'm in here. Also while we're here, another worthy tidbit of advice since we're at it is um, uh, invest in a magnet because if you're a dumbass and you drop bolts and shit, um, it does come in handy huh. okay so now here's the thing we're gonna take a three inch diameter hole um, we're gonna block this off of course but we got to put the new hole at the back so as you can imagine I'll show you real quick these are roughly the same size for comparison's sake um, so you got to figure out the placement just right without really causing any issues with structural integrity to the box um, you can tell right there it's gonna I mean it's just about right for it um, so we want to kind of plan ourselves to where we're drilling sort of right there where there's still material around and all that stuff so um you can mark it you can wing it you know it is uh whatever floats your boat um i'm gonna probably wing it uh based on semi-scientific calculations and we'll see how this goes <laughs> okay it wasn't even like 30 seconds ago that i took that last clip uh i don't know if you guys do any video <laughs> anyway i I hit the wing, bro. I just winged it, and uh, it seemed to work out. You know, we've got enough material around the edges to where uh, we've not really sacrificed any kind of strength issue. Um, and that hose I showed you earlier will just will kind of work it into this. Um, so that's sort of the next step. All right, I went ahead and uh, <clears throat> sealed this up about half assed as long as it's, it's on there. That's pretty good. Um, so that'll be run and plumbed up. You know, which obviously this extends. Uh, inside, I had like an old Bondo spreader ordeal. <laughs> Uh, and so I just kind of zipped it down with a bolt and then sealed around the edges of it uh, on this side and the other side uh, here. Uh, so, you know, that that should do it. I mean, it's nothing crazy uh, going on. So that's got that part of it solved. So we've got to move on up to the engine bay side. Uh, so with this, obviously we're going to be, uh, this adapter piece is going to go uh, in the neighborhood of there, right? Um, I'm going to try to mine a little bit lower. Uh, you've got these uh, the wiring and stuff to work with, but the thing I'm trying to avoid, I'm trying to get it low enough where everything still connects up good, but um, at the same time, I'm, I'm a little concerned about interference with the hood as you close it. Because if you think about it, that, that tubing's got to come up off this and then down. So um, if we need to, we can clearance. Uh, we'll figure that out when we uh, 
get there. Um, but yeah, basically I'm gonna set it up somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, of this right here. And of course we're gonna have to sort of take the whole saw again, drill that out, and then just run some self tappers in uh, into this area. So um, we'll uh, <laughs> get to that. So I've kind of chosen a location. I just sort of laid it up here and sort of moved some things around. Um, made a few dots for the four holes and then obviously the main one. So we'll um, kind of get to that and uh, punch through this bastard. Hey, <laughs> oh shit. Bingo. And just to satisfy some curiosity, um, stuck my flashlight in here. Uh, you can see this hole back here is, uh, and that's where <clears throat> any water that gets up into the cavity will drain out through here. And this is directly above um, where the fender uh, meets kind of alongside the firewall area. Um, as you can see, exits that cow drain, then right down through here. So if you ever catch water dripping out of this area, that's, that's why. Uh, and while we're here, before I put anything else together, I'd like to point out, um, I've heard uh, a few people think that uh, there's some concern with the rainwater overhead of the wiper cow, like this is all open. Uh, and, and it is open in a portion, um, but it's here just a bit over. And just to, just, just to make that point clear, uh, this is a flashlight shine from above. Uh, this is where the opening is, if you can see kind of inside there. So as far as the direct shots, you're not really getting water dropping straight down in or anything like that. And you know, granted it does fall down there, but you've got kind of a pit well below where this goes in. So unless you're just driving in a damn monsoon, you're really not going to get anything. And if you're driving in a monsoon anyway, keep in mind that the pickup is right here as it is. So if you're hauling ass, I mean, really, if you're wide open throttle, it might suck some shit up anyway. And again, um, a, a snorkel, Jesus Christ, those sons of bitches hang up here, uh, wide open. Um, so I think it's a non-issue. I, I feel like the benefits far outweigh any uh, uh, conspiracy theorist bullshit. Uh. Okay, so I've got things kind of nestled in here now so you can kind of get an idea how this is gonna go. Um, so basically, <clears throat> I've blocked off the old access point here. This used to be open, that's where the air box pulled air, but it is blocked and sealed inside and out. Um, so rather than pulling from here, it's actually gonna start pulling um, from the back side of the air box, which will pull its air out from wiper cow. Um, and again, this side right here is protected from above from rainwater. Uh, the opening didn't start till right about this area right here in that channel over a few uh, few inches, I think pretty much to the middle right there. Uh, so what's gonna be pulling from here is no big deal. I've got kind of a little bit of a lip inside there to kind of keep any issues as far as that goes. Um, but yeah, basically uh, this is the end result um, and the hood does close on it. Uh, it's slightly, this ridge here will start touching um, but it doesn't really, it's not bad enough to cause any issues. I mounted it low enough that um, <clears throat> that's kind of a non-issue there. So uh, so basically what we'll do is uh, kind of come down through here. I'll go ahead and finish reinstall these bolts and stuff and uh, set the filter down and then the top of the airbox and we're, um, oh, that's a wrap. All right, so that's got everything pretty much wrapped up. Um, got everything back together. Uh, I didn't go, you know, as far as the detail stuff, pretty simple, just put back the shit that you took off a while ago. Did, what? Okay. Well, anyway, so uh, we'll get a look at this thing. Uh, so here we got the completed setup. Went ahead and put a clamp on, obviously here. Um, so it comes out of this particular area, plums down into the back side of the air box on that lower end. And um, basically it, it'll it pull air from here, go down to the bottom, the filter is sandwiched in between, and then uh, just, just basically carries on as normal. The only thing we really did here is just happen to move it uh, from this front, which I've blocked off, uh, to the point where we're pulling air from back here now. Um, so I'll do a couple things. Like I said, it'll raise R as far as just, uh, you know, dropping in somewhere or something like that. You got a little bit less to worry about here. Um, it did raise it a little bit because you're looking at about the distance from here versus back here. Um, but, um, and theoretically, I mean, you should be pulling cooler air uh, from the cow. Uh, at this point, that's going to be um, not a reason to do this. Uh, but what I wanted from this more than anything is just kind of look like mostly factors, factors you can get with this stuff. Because a lot of these things, the one, especially the ones going over the valve cover, are really just disruptive in here. I, you know, for the most part, this is uh, about as close as you can get to get this type of setup without it uh, and not have it look completely out of place for the most part. And the hood does shut on this. Um, 
it does kind of compress it down a little bit right here um, but not enough to cause any issues um, and everything is good and solid right here anyway um, so um, so yeah that's pretty much the completed ordeal I'll probably uh, get a little bit more time for the uh, some of the silicone and stuff to sort of cure out and then um, I'll uh, probably start this thing up and see what we got all right, tell you what, let's go ahead and do a, do a cold start with this setup. I've not uh, actually started this thing in a few, several days, actually. Yeah, I can't, I can't truthfully pick up on anything uh, different sound-wise inside of here. Um, so, um, you know, that's kind of a plus. I didn't really want it to be the, no, I've heard uh, the Spectre intakes, and they're very audible. You know, because they, again, going back to the thing, passenger side here that's where your blower motor comes in so you get a lot of noise from right there by coming in on the driver's side you don't really get that um so it's uh you know it, it's pretty silent in here and this is off a cold start too that's usually when they're at their loudest so if there's any noise at all to come off the Sintag, i i don't think it'll be any kind of an issue even when it got up to uh amy or you know you know regular temperature basically is what i'm getting at but i can't pick up on anything here so um Solid mod overall, I would say. It's, it's pretty much a success. Uh, ignore the fact that this son of a bitch is dirty. Right here, that is. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, uh, 10 out of 10, would recommend, yeah. <laughs> well, hope you learned something. Uh, truthfully, uh, I think it's a new generation or something like that. This, what I did today is not new. This is not a unique idea by any means. This has been, on internet forums for uh, well over a decade now. Um, I've seen it a long time ago, uh, and this is actually the first time I've done it personally. Um, it was something I had in mind to do uh, for quite some time, and I always put it off. I was like, eh, whatever. But you know, I've had a, a few occurrences back here behind the house, dropping into just kind of creek crossings and things like that, where I'm like, you know what? That would really come in handy uh, without a whole lot of backlash otherwise. Um, it's not some big old gawky bastard snorkel sticking outside or anything like that. Um, and it doesn't really change too much in the engine bay either. I mean, granted, you don't pick up any free space like you would with some of the other Cal intakes on the market that you have to pay for, um, such as the Spectre and the Thor intake. But, uh, yeah, if you've got a little time uh, and you don't mind cutting some holes and shit, um, pretty good option. Uh, I'll know more as we go. Yeah, I'll give you guys a shop tour, maybe, uh, one of these days. Just glad to be back on the tubes, bro. Anyway, back to business. See y'all next time.